I'm just getting comfortable on my living room floor to sit down with you guys today and film a get to know me video. So since I hit a thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel, I cannot believe it. I thought it was the perfect time to do a get to know me video. For those of you that are new to my platforms, this will give you a chance to know me a little bit better. And for those of you that follow me that want to know a little bit more, then this is the video to sit down and watch. Before I jump into today's video, I have to take a minute to thank every single one of you that subscribe to my channel and have supported me over all my platforms. It means the absolute world. Earlier on in the week, over on my Instagram stories, I put up a question sticker for you guys to get your questions in. And I have been overwhelmed with questions, so I have picked out the ones that I feel that people would wanna know about, and also the ones I get the most. So I'm sorry if I've missed you. I promise to do another video very soon and get some more questions answered. But I'm gonna get started because there is quite a bit to get through. So I'm gonna start off with a bit of the lighter, easier questions. I have to say, you guys went in a bit deep. <laughs> You guys want to know some stuff, <laughs> um, which is cool. I am happy to share it with you guys, but we're going to start nice and easy. So what's my height? I am five foot six going on five foot seven. Very average guys. Very average. How long have you been vegan? Did you try other approaches? Did you ever crave? So this is probably the question I was asked the most. And I feel that this question just sort of covers all the angles. So this should answer a lot of people's questions. It's hard to remember because I'm sure like most of you will know that have made a transition like that. And those of you that are kind of at the beginning of your journey, it's quite blurry at the beginning because you sort of go back and forth. But all in all, I would say about 13 years in total. Did you try other approaches? This was a long time ago. There were many approaches. And I think that with anything, you just shouldn't ever give up. So even if you fall, you just you just pick yourself up and you try again and you try again and you try again and you just keep trying until you get the result that you want, which is basically what I did. What I remember specifically was that I just decided to make one change in my day and that was breakfast. So I just changed my whole beginning of the day routine and that's when I implemented the lemon and water the green juice and the smoothie bowl. And I kept everything the same for the for the later part of the day. But I feel from just making that change in the morning, it changed my life. It didn't happen overnight, but as the days, the weeks and the months went by, the old stuff that I was used to, the old ways, they just sort of melted away. And my body responded better to the new things that I was introducing to it, if that makes sense. So it started at breakfast, then that moved on to lunch, and then it moved on to dinner. And now it's very, very easy. So that was my approach. That was the, that was the thing for me that really helped me and got me on the right path. To be honest with you, I didn't really make the decision that I want to be vegan or plant-based. It kind of just happened. So I'm going to make this long story into a really quick one for you guys. I basically ended up going on a detox retreat, not because I wanted to, just because someone we knew was going and wanted us to come with them and we agreed. We actually had no idea what we were agreeing to or where we were going. We just were like, yeah, let's do this. So we went to this detox retreat and it involved basically not eating at all. So I didn't eat for like eight days, eight, nine days. I can't remember exactly, but about that. You were given like your herbs, for the day. So I'm guessing that that was the stuff that your body needed, the nourishment your body needed to get by each day. But actual solid food, you weren't allowed. And along with that, you had um, colonics every single day. You had massages and it was just basically to get the toxins that are deep within your system out and it was the most difficult thing ever but it was also the most enlightening thing ever and it really just changed the pathway of my life like I was going this way and it just shifted completely and I'm so grateful and blessed that it had but within detox you have class so for an hour a day you would have schooling almost and it would teach you about foods and what effect they have on your body and where they come from and that's when at that age I think I was like 20 my mind was blown I was just like 
oh my God, how does, how, how have I not been told this in school? How, how does nobody know this? And it just, something shifted in my mind and I just knew that that was right. That was correct. I understood it. And after I left detox, that's when I started to implement it. But like I mentioned earlier, it wasn't something that I came back and it was clean cut and it was done. I, there was a lot of back and forth for a few years. Do I ever crave? So now I don't crave for anything that is non-vegan ever. In fact, it actually makes me feel sick. If I see it, if I smell it, if it, even if I remember what it tasted like, it's not appealing to me. I actually feel that most non-plant-based foods are quite boring for me personally. I'm not saying that they are boring, just for me they're boring. I just find a plant-based diet just so much more interesting. The only thing I've ever really craved in my life is chocolate after dinner. I don't know if anyone else has that has that thing, but I do. And all you do is replace it with the right stuff, the, the healthy stuff. So there are many chocolate bars out there. You can make chocolate yourself that is healthy. And I just think, especially now, like when I first turned vegan, there was nothing, literally like you could buy nothing vegan in the shop. If I went out and I didn't have food on me, then I would just starve or I just eat fruit because there was nothing available. So now I just feel it's so much easier. I hope that answers your question. I, I know I went on a bit of a tangent there, but it's such a hard question to answer because there's so much depth to it. So I hope that was clear. And if you guys have any other questions around this topic, then drop them in the comment section below and I will get back to you. What's my workout routine? I do half an hour. Actually, I'm going to link it all below because it's all YouTube stuff mainly. Um, but I do half an hour of Zumba, dancing about cardio, getting the heart rate up and getting the blood pumping around my body. And then I do about 40, 45 minutes of conditioning. And then we do about 15 to 20 minutes of stretching. And then we finish it up with meditation. And that we are doing about three to four times a week at the moment. I do go for regular walks as well. I'd like to do more. I'm sure when the weather gets better, I will. But I'm doing between one and two times a week. But remember, with working out, 80% of it starts on your plate and what goes into your mouth. So you don't need to do a lot to keep fit. I just enjoy it so, 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 so much. It's just good for my mental health, which is why I'm doing quite a bit of it. Okay, so to share my journey, how I moved out of my parents. So this is a very long story. I'm not going to be able to fit the entire thing into today's video, but I will just skim over my journey. So I didn't move out of my home. I actually ran away from home when I was 17 years old. Myself and Stefania, we left London and we ran away to Glasgow in Scotland where we stayed for about six to seven years. And I have to say it was the best thing that we ever did for ourselves. We had so much fun. It taught us so, so much. It was just incredible. I have so many amazing memories and I truly believe that that decision really changed our lives for the better. So absolutely no regrets. The reason we ran away, the reason I ran away is because oh, a few years prior to me running away, I went through quite a horrible time. My first boyfriend from school was sleeping with one of my best friends um which the whole school knew about and didn't but no one bothered to tell me and then I found out and I felt like an absolute idiot while this was going on my family were losing everything so my family had gone bankrupt and we moved from our family home to um a flat and then we ended up being put in a halfway house um where it was just terrible there was a final straw moment i remember myself and stefania were working in a men's clothes shop in a shopping mall i'm not going to mention either of them and we weren't treated very well there one day i remember myself and stefania just sitting at lunch and just saying to each other what's the point of of us being here no one cares and no one will notice and it would just be better if we just left we basically went to the bus station and we got on the 
coach and I remember it was like I think we had the mega buses then that were like a pound and yeah we jumped on the bus to Glasgow and then the rest is history really <laughs> um so yeah that's basically what happened without me going into too much detail about the story but to answer your question yeah I ran away from home when I was 17 to Glasgow I suppose that would take me nicely onto the next question which is would you ever move back to Scotland and the answer to that is absolutely 100% I would love to move back to Scotland. I love Scotland. I love the Scots. I love, I just love everything about Scotland. And um, we obviously have a lot of amazing friends there and people that we hold very close to our hearts. So I would absolutely move back to Scotland. Yes. Okay, what do we have next? How has the pandemic affected you personally and professionally and how did you manage to survive? By the skin of my bloody teeth, that's how I have. <laughs> um, but seriously, it's been an absolute nightmare um, as it has been for most of us. So for me personally, um, it's actually given me a lot of space and time to concentrate on the things that I've always wanted to do. One of them being my YouTube channel. So that's been a positive for me. I've also managed to organize a lot of areas of my life. And I've also been able to do a lot of self work, which has been an absolute blessing. So if I'm honest, personally, not bad at all. I'm actually enjoying the new life I am creating for myself. Professionally, so aside of my blog, the other thing that I used to do was be in events. So I was in the events industry for about 10 years. My, I, I, I don't know timeframes very well. Everything is a blur at the beginning of my life because I was just running around like a crazy woman trying to make it all work. We just established our business. We got some great clients and then lockdown hit. So it it's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow because we're looking at 10 years of extremely hard work. But luckily, I do have my blog and I do have my Instagram platform. So I obviously had to put all of my focus on that. And although that took a hit as well, hugely, it kept me ticking by. And again, that's why I have started YouTube, because it's just another way of building my business and getting it to a place that I would like it to be. So the other part of this question is how did you manage to survive? Um, cutting back, <laughs> starving myself, no. Um, in all honesty, going back to the story I told you of when I left home, my family went through a bankruptcy and obviously we were put, we lost our home, everything, and then we were put in a halfway house and we were given very limited food for the three of us. And then when myself and Spaniel went away to Scotland, we really didn't have much money. So again, we had to be very, very careful. I mean, along with my grandmother, my nonna, who would scream at me if I wasted anything, even the tiniest bit of oil left in the, in the, in the jar, she would go crazy saying that I was wasting it, even though you'd have to stand there for about an hour waiting for this drop to come out. Um, so I suppose it's just really been ingrained in me to respect and be careful with how I manage myself and money and food and all the rest of it. We also shop smart, like I've mentioned before, we bulk buy and we also go to Old Spitterfields Market where we get like our fruit and veg and you buy it in bulk and it's a lot cheaper. But over the winter, it has been, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's been, it's been very, very hard. But I suppose what's kept me going is creating content on YouTube because I really just had to borrow myself away for a while because I had to teach myself. I didn't know how to edit, I didn't know how to even film a video. I didn't know how to speak to a camera. I didn't know, I didn't know anything basically. So I just put my head down and worked, 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 worked. But what I can say is that every day I'm blessed, I'm grateful. I do the small things that really, really make me happy, whether it's having a nice bath, whether it's having a dance in my room, whether it's working out, whether it's creating a really nice dinner for myself. And those are the things that keep me going and keep me happy. And that's all you can really do. All I know is the only thing that I have that is secure is the time I have right now. And I have control of what I do with that time. We'll look back at this when we're really, really busy and have no time for anything again. So I just think use this time to do those things that you've never had time for, you know, whether it's reading books or learning a language or learning a new skill. 
help others in whatever possible way that you can. There's so many things that we can do. We've spent our lives being so busied that we forgot that there's so many things that you can fill your day with and can fill your day with quite happily. I just think it's been a huge shift and it's taken a minute to get used to. And yeah, I would like to start to get a bit of movement as most of us are feeling now. And I just hope that we can travel soon because for me, that's the most important thing right now. I have family in Italy and in Poland and travel is really close to my heart. So I really hope Fingers crossed that we can get moving soon. My AM and PM skincare routine. So I'm actually going to be filming a video on this to go really into detail and actually show you the products that I use. But to be honest, it's very, very simple. So it starts with what you put into your mouth. Your skin is a reflection of what's going on inside your body. And if your body is congested and full of toxins, that's going to show in your skin. So drinking lots of water, eating lots of fruit and veg, avoiding toxic foods like white refined sugars, alcohol, you know, smoking, all of the bad stuff. That's going to give you a head start with your skin. Topically, I keep it really simple. So the first thing is not to wash my face with just any soap. I use a cleanser. So the cleanser I'm using at the moment is by White Rabbit Skincare. To be honest, a lot of my skincare right now is White Rabbit because it just doesn't irritate my skin. And it's really, really, really amazing stuff. It's chemical free, it's vegan. And that's probably key with your skincare. It has to be chemical free. You cannot be loading toxins onto your skin because that's just gonna cause a load of problems. And also those toxins get absorbed into the bloodstream, which is not going to be good for us at all. In the morning, it's a simple face wash with White Rabbit Skincare Cleanser. And then I moisturize with um, their moisturizer too. And then in the evening, I use the makeup remover by Ren, if I'm wearing any. Then I'll use the White Rabbit Eye Cream. I also use that in the morning. And then I will use the Ren Night Repair Serum. I think that's what it's called. So that's sort of like my staple. And then I will oil my face when I when my hair's dirty. Because if I oil it tonight, for example, my hair's clean, my hair will get really oily and then it will look a mess the next day. So I'll oil my face about two to three times a week. And then I'll do a face mask once a week. I'm using one by Lush at the moment. Um, and then, yeah, like I mentioned, eat clean and then your face will show the benefits. You will glow, you'll have clear skin etc etc but like I mentioned I will be filming a full in-depth video of this so for those of you that asked me that question keep your eyes peeled because so I'm going to finish up with a sweet question and it's what makes me happy and I suppose what makes me happy is simplicity in every form I've just noticed that the simpler things are the happier I am along with spending time with the ones that I love and just catching jokes, laughing. I love laughing. It's food for my soul and there's nothing better than human connection. And I cannot wait for this lockdown to be over so I can reconnect with my people and just have a good time and enjoy this life. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you feel that you know me a little bit better. Any questions that you do have, guys, please drop them below. I will answer all of the questions. And if you do want to ask me some more questions or want to go a bit more deeper into the things that I've mentioned today, please do. Don't be shy. I absolutely want to hear from you. For those of you that are new here, please remember to subscribe. And I'm also over on Instagram. It's at honestly Alessandra if you want to come and say hey there. I'm active every single day. Thank you so much for watching today's video, guys, and I will see you next week. Bye.